For the day of the Lord is near upon all. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thy own. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink. Yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down. We're gonna drink every ounce of judgment, Thomas. And they shall be as though they had not. Been. They shall be as though they never moved at all, as a dream. But upon Mount Zion shall be delivered. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. Go ahead. There shall be holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. I said in one of the daughters of Sarah me, and we spoke. And uh, we talked about, uh, you know, building unity among sisters, building unity unity amongst brothers and stuff like that, but then they mean they were talking about the sisters. And I was telling folks, I'm like, like, uh, just dealing with congregational events. You had Sister Novel post a few congregational events where a lot of people don't never show up to. You know what I'm saying? Just like even with bringing in the Sabbath together. A lot of y'all, you, you already don't supposed to be doing nothing on the Sabbath. I mean, you know, uh, why you ain't fellowshipping in righteousness with your brothers and sisters? You know what I'm saying? What you want to be just like, I'm tired. I just want to lay at the house. I don't want to fellowship in righteousness with my brothers and sisters. Read that in Hebrews 10 and 25 real quick. Start at 24. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10 and verse 24. And let us consider one another. To provoke unto love. You hear that? That's the point of us coming together, to provoke one another to love. <laughs> Sit down and get to know each other. You can't get to know each other on the Sabbath. It ain't number classes coming out. Y'all don't do nothing but sit next to each other. Read up. And to good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. You say don't forsake the assembly of yourselves together. Man, y'all know how many times we have put up about bowling nights? Now look, it's on you to come or not. The point is, don't sit up there and don't come and say nothing about unity when these stuff, when, when we sit up here, we set up these events, we set this stuff up constantly, we do stuff constantly, and hell, y'all ain't never involved in it. Read up. As the matter of some is. It says as the matter of some is. Uh, just like I was talking to the brothers last night, proofing the pudding of that. So, uh, Friday was a, uh, one hell of a day for me. Not Friday, Thursday. Thursday was one hell of a day for me. Um, I had to go to Little Rock, basically having some business. But the point is, man, on the way back, uh, I was trying to rush and get this trailer back to the U-Haul place before it closed. But in the process, a lot of stuff took place where it almost knocked me out of the spirit to the point that uh, we did have bowling night that Thursday night to the point that I was like, you know what, I ain't gonna show. I, ain't, I mean, uh, I might not go. But you know what? I decided to apply the scripture. You know what I'm saying? Hebrews 10 and 25. Forsake not to assemble yourselves together. We already got brothers and sisters up there waiting. You know what I'm saying? Get up there. It's probably what a good like 15 to 20 of us total. But the point is we came together in righteousness and we had a good time. You know what I'm saying? So look, no, I don't want to hear nobody talk about unity and y'all ain't the ones helping to build unity. I noticed one thing, and I was, I was telling uh, a bunch of the brothers the other day. When I'm in town, we always trying to go bold or do something or do that or do that. When I'm outside of town, I don't got nothing to do with what the hell y'all do. It's on y'all to build together. It shouldn't be me sitting up there saying, okay, look, we're going to put this up here. We're going to put this up there, or we're going to do this, or we're going to do that. Y'all, what y'all going to do when I leave the congregation? You know what I'm saying? So it's on you to help build the unity up in this congregation. Uh, today's class is going to be called When the Spirit Leaves You. <laughs> Some of y'all be out the spirit, you don't even know it. You already gone. You already in the flesh. You so far gone, you don't even know it yet. The spirit is, it is probably left you. But look, I'm going to show you what happens when the spirit leaves you. Now let's start with Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Listen to this. 
Y'all got to understand, man, in this truth, it's going to be constant temptation. It's going to be a constant battle. It's going to be a constant battle. You got to stay. I was dealing with the brothers yesterday. Before we go there, get First Peter chapter 1 real quick. I was dealing with the brothers about you got to have a sober mind. You got to be sober-minded in this truth. You got to keep a clear head. Y'all always worried about stuff that uh, you, you worried about stuff that you can't, you don't got no control of. Some of the stuff you're worried about, you don't got no control of. And you just worrying. And not knowing that your worry is stopping you from studying. Your worry is stopping you from congregating. The spirit leaving you. Read that real quick in uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. I say, gird up the loins of your mind. Read them. Be sober. Be sober. You got to have a clear, you want to last in the truth, you got to have a clear head, man. I'll tell you right now. Read them. And hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. I'm going to show you why you got to be sober-minded. Get that in 1 Peter 5 and 8. Why you got to keep a clear head. You got to have a clear thought process in this truth. Because some of y'all don't understand, man, the devil be, the devil on you all the time. The devil owns some of y'all more than his own others, but the devil owns you all the time. What is Satan trying to do? Satan trying to pull you up out of the, tr out of the truth. This is why it's so important to be sober-minded. Read that. First Peter chapter 5, and verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeing whom he may devour. You hear that Satan trying to take you out. You don't got a clear mind. Your thought process ain't right. You ain't studying. You know what I'm saying? You always worried about it, all types of other stuff. You thinking about booty and that stuff all the time. Guess what's going to end up happening? The spirit going to leave you. Look, go to Ecclesiastes chapter 30, uh, and I mean chapter 40. I'm going to show you why it's so important to have that clear thought process in this truth. Ecclesiastes chapter 40, uh, verse, let me see, let me see. Uh, what they want is sometimes a man's mind want to tell them more. It's Ecclesiastes 40, I think. Hold on, let me look at it. It's 37? Okay, uh, yeah, get there. 37 to 14, I'll pray. Sirach, chapter 37 and verse 14. Read. For a man's mind is sometimes wont to tell him more than seven watchmen that sit above in a high tower. You hear that? Your mind want to tell you more than seven watchmen that sit above in a high tower. Imagine seven watchmen look at seven different ways and they see trouble come. And then everybody running to you. This, that, 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 that. You know what I'm saying? You got to have a clear thought process in this truth. Your mind trying to tell you all type of stuff. That's why I go to Galatians 5 and 16. You got to be sober minded in this truth, man. You got to be in the spirit. Some of y'all don't understand, man. The spirit had already left you. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. They say, walk in the spirit, and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Read on. For the flesh lusted against the spirit. Look, your flesh is always fighting against your spirit. That's why you see brothers don't last long in this truth, man. Yesterday we were dealing with the full type of Israelites. That's why you see brothers come in and they leave out. Some brothers can't overturn. Yeah, they're excited about hearing the word. All the Israelite, bro. We got to keep the commandments of God. Then affliction come for the word's sake. Some of them out. They gone. The lust of other things, some people can't overcome their lust. That's what make them leave. Some people, a trial and tribulation come around. They out. And then you got their fourth type of Israelite that enduring this thing. Take whatever come their way. They can take correction. Anything that come their way, they take it, they endure, and they bring forth fruit for the Lord. Read on. And the spirit against the flesh. And your spirit is fighting against the flesh. Read on. And these are contrary the one to the other. They contrary one to another. You want to know why? Because God works through your spirit and Satan works through your flesh. Read on. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Let's prove that. Go to Romans chapter 8. Let's prove that. Romans chapter 8. Start at verse 3 or something like that. The book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, 
God sending his own son. That's just going into the Lord's sacrifice. Read on. In the likeness of sinful flesh. Christ came as a man. And for sin condemned sin in the flesh. And died for your sins. That's it. Read on. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not after the flesh. Who walk not after the flesh. Read on. But after the spirit. Read on. For they that are after the flesh. Read. Do mind the things of the flesh. You after the flesh. You mind the things of the flesh. What is the flesh? Get Galatians chapter 5 real quick. Go back there. Verse 19. Galatians chapter 5 verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. They manifest. It's easy to see. Read on. Which are these? Adultery. Adultery. Fornication. Fornication. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. It's the works of the flesh. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Hatred. Variance. Emulations. Wrath. Strife. Seditions. Heresies. Envies. Murders. Drunkenness. Revelings. And such like of me, which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they would do such things, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. See, if you're doing this, you ain't going to inherit the kingdom of God. Now go back to Romans 8 and 5. They're the works of the flesh right there. You moving in that spirit right there? You moving in the flesh? Then you ain't getting the kingdom. It's simple as that. Read what you got. Romans chapter 8, verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Guess what? So if you after the flesh, that's all you're going to be. That's, your, that's what your thought process is going to be. For real. If you always chasing big booty girls, guess what? That's your thought process. Your thought process, your thought process is going to be to commit some type of little sexual immorality. To, uh, some type of uh, lasciviousness. If you got a spirit of hatred on you, it's going to manifest. Why? Your, your thought process, the stuff you do, is going to be hateful. Read them. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. They say they that are after the spirit, mind the things of the spirit. Get that in Romans 6, I mean John 6 and 63. Let's see what the spirit is. The book of John, chapter 6 and verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the words that I speak unto you are spirit uh, and are life. So if you after the spirit, guess what? You got your, your concentration, your thought process is going to be on the word of God. That's why a lot of folks fall out the truth. They never was in the spirit in the first place. You want to know why? Because your mindset, your affection, your love never was for this word. Get that in Colossians 3 and 2. This is what your thought process is supposed to be. The book of Colossians, chapter 3 and verse 2. Set your affections on things above. Here they say, set your affection on things above. Read on. Not on things on the earth. Not on things on earth. Some of y'all affection ain't set on things above. All that you worried about is things on earth. My job, my house, my car, a paycheck, uh, the woman, my shoes, my clothes. That's all you worried about. You ain't worried about uh, the things on high. You, you say you love the Lord and uh, you want to get the kingdom of heaven. But in your actions, you can see that you don't love the Lord and want to get the kingdom of heaven. Read that one more time for me. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Not on things on earth. Some of y'all mind your heart is in the wrong place. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6, verse 11. When your mind in the wrong place, when your thought process ain't clear, guess what? The spirit is going to start to leave you. When your thought process is out the, uh, out the flesh, the most high ain't going to work with you. He ain't going to deal with you. I'm going to show you what's going to end up happening to you. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, and verse 11. Wherefore, set your affection upon my words. Desire them. That's what your affection is supposed to be. But your affection on everything else but the word of God. You care about everything else but the word of God. Read up. And ye shall be instructed. And you shall be instructed. The Most High going to give you the instructions. Some people still chasing the career. Uh, or you want want to uh, you, you want to still be the best basketball player, or you want the damn rap deal, or whatever. You chasing all the wrong stuff right now instead of making sure that you applying the commandments of God and being a servant to Him to raise back up uh, His people. Try to find people. That, hey, you gotta get it right. If your thought process 
Ain't that? Guess what's gonna end up happening? You're gonna end up calling out the truth sooner or later. I'm gonna show you something. You know, give me that in 1 Samuel 10 and 6. The, the only reason why you in here right now because the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. I'm telling you right now, everybody up in here, you up in here, you keeping the Sabbath, the Spirit on you. Yeah, we know some of y'all are going to leave. That's because the Spirit going to depart from you. I'm going to prove that to you. First Samuel 10 to 6. You know, you got brothers and sisters. They come in. Sisters wear the long dress. Sisters wear the fringes. They put their head covering on. Brothers grow their beards. They all have that strong, mean-looking beard. They even go to camp a couple times. That's because the Spirit of the Lord is upon you right now. But look, listen to this. I'm going to show you, read. 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 6. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shalt be turned into another man. That's why you turned into another man. Because the Spirit of the Lord is upon you right now. But I'm going to show you something. I'm going to deal with Saul today. I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to deal with Saul. I'm going to show you how when you don't apply the scriptures, how the Spirit of the Lord will leave you. For real. Go to 1 Samuel's real quick. Chapter 15, verse 1. 1 Samuel's chapter 15 and verse 1. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people. So Saul was made king over the church in Israel. Read on. Over Israel. Now, therefore, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. So he said, look, you need to listen to the voice of the words of the Lord. Read. Thus said the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. And you know how I love, why I love this so much? Because the Lord says, surely I'm avenge uh, your oppressors. He says, surely I'm avenge you. The Lord said, look, I remember how Amalek laid wait for you when you came up out of Egypt. Listen to what the Lord told uh, Saul. Read. Now go and smite Amalek. He said, look, go and smite Amalek. Go kill them. Read on. And utterly destroy all that they have. Man, the Lord said, destroy everything they got. Read. And spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and son. So listen, he said, slay both man and woman, infant, infant and suckling. What else? Ox and sheep. Camel and ass. He said, look, kill everything they got. Kill everybody, everything they got. This is the type of God we serve. You was talking about you serve the God Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is how he get down. The most high don't play about his chosen people. What that said in uh, Isaiah uh, 44? I think Isaiah 44. Let me look at it. The one about he gave a ransom. Or is it 42? I'm going to show you how God get down. I know y'all come up out the Christian church. And you think God is all about kisses and hugs and flowers and all that, man. Our God ain't no flower God. Give me uh, Isaiah 43 and 3. Listen to this. The book of Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 3. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom. God said, look, I destroyed Egypt for you. I gave Egypt for your ransom. Read on. Ethiopia and Seba for thee. He said, I destroyed nations for you. The most I don't play about his chosen people. Now go back to where we was at, 1 Samuel 15. So First. the Lord gave Saul a charge. He said, look, destroy everything they got. Oxen, sheep, infants, women, everybody. Read what you got. 1 Samuel 15 and 4. And Saul gathered the people together. And number no, 15, verse 9. Verse 9. But I'm just going to jump around. Y'all read the story with yourself. I got a bunch of scriptures. Read what you got. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep. So you see this? But what did he do? He spurred a God and the best of his sheep. God said, kill everybody. Destroy the sheep. Destroy the oxen. He disobeyed the word right here, right now. Read up. And of the oxen and of the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile and refused that they destroyed other men. Read up. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, Now here come the prophet. Read up. It repented me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he has turned back from following me and hath not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord so, all night. So the Lord came to the prophet and like, Hey, man, this man disobedient as hell. 
He said, grieve me. And Samuel, he cried about that thing. Jump down to verse 17. Now check this out. Verse 17. And Samuel said, when thou wast little in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? Read up. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Read. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst flee upon the spoil? He said, you didst flee upon the spoil? You didn't obey me. You wanted the spoil. You kept the sheep. You kept the oxen. And I'm going to tell you this how it is. You'll read somebody in scripture, or you'll correct somebody, they'll make a excuse. Watch this. Watch this excuse song I'm going to make. Read on. And it is evil in the sight of the Lord. He said, this evil, read. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. So this how, this how it is. People be sitting up there, they be thinking they right. So now the prophet already rebuking them, telling you, you didn't do what the Lord said. He said, yes, I obeyed the voice of the Lord. Read on. And have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, Amalek and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Read on. But the people took of the spoil. He said, but the people took of the spoil. Sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. So he made an excuse. No, no, you know what? We took the sheep and the oxen and all that to make a sacrifice to the Lord. Listen to what Samuel going to tell you. Read up. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Read up. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. And to hearken than the fact of wrath. You hear that? The Lord don't care about them sacrifices. The Lord, like, oh Lord, man, to obey is better than sacrifice. You talking about you held this to sacrifice? Well, the Lord don't care about no sacrifice. He wants you to obey him. He wants you to hearken. Read on. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. You don't understand, man. When you sisters rebelling against your husband, that's witchcraft. When you brothers rebelling against the leadership that's set up, that's witchcraft. Because the leadership, give me that in Psalm 75, 75 and 6, 75 and 5. Give me that real quick. Leadership set up by the Lord. You rebel against the Lord. But now, you know, they don't think they rebel against the Lord. For real. Let the most high, if you got a problem with leadership, you let the most high do the work and pull down the lead. We done seen plenty of leaders get pulled down in this truth. We done seen elder men, we done seen uh, deacons, we done seen officers, we done seen captains, we done seen these so-called dudes that call themselves high priests, or whatever you want to call, get pulled down up in this truth by the Most High. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 75, verse 6. For promotion cometh neither from the east. You hear that promotion don't come from the east. You brothers that was made soldiers and officers up in there, it didn't come from the east. It didn't come from us, read on. Nor from the west. Nobody else didn't say, hey, promote this brother. Read on. Nor from the south. Read on. But God is the judge. The most high is the judge, read. He put it down one and set it up another. He put down one and set up another. So if you lose your rank, guess what? It ain't, I didn't take your rank. The Lord took your rank. He put down one, he set up another. If I lose my rank, it ain't leadership took my rank. The most high took me down. But when you're spiritual, when you have a spirit, you understand it. Only you, only you understand stuff like that when you're spiritual. You'll know, okay, ah, oh, man, you know, I, I was a soldier. I've been bust down, from a, bust down to a member again. This thing got to be from the Lord. This got to be from the Lord. Uh, what we at? First Samuel 15 and 23. Okay, First Samuel 15 and 23. So just to let y'all know right there, look, uh, the most high set up the leadership. So you rebelling against leadership, that's witchcraft too. Sisters uh, rebelling against their husband in their house, that's witchcraft. Freedom. For well, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. He said that's the same thing as the sin of witchcraft. Freedom. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. And when you stubborn, that's the same thing as being idol uh, uh, idolatry. Freedom. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. So since he rejected the word of the Lord and he didn't do what the Lord told him to do, the Lord said, I'm going to strip the kingdom from you. Read on. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord 
and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. He said, look, he ain't for God. He feared the people and obeyed the people. Read on. Just, now, like, okay. just like some of y'all brothers and sisters up in here, you don't fear the Lord. You listen to what another sister say. Or you will listen to what another brother say instead of sitting up there going into your leadership who the Lord dealing with. Because whether you believe it or not, the Lord dealing with your leadership. But some of y'all, right, some of y'all think the Lord ain't dealing with the leadership. The Lord dealing with that brother. The Lord dealing with this brother over here. Brother, come on, man. The Lord dealing with everybody up in here in some type of way, but the most I said an order up. Read up. Now therefore I pray thee, pardon my sin, and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord. Read up. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected thee from being king so over the, Israel. So the Lord rejected him from being king over Israel. Why? Because he disobeyed the Lord. That's what started. When the Spirit started to lead you, it's, you start doing stuff to di uh, disobey the Lord. Leadership Officer, brother come to you, a uh, soldier come to you, warn you. I ain't going to say soldiers because y'all really can't judge mouth. But the officers will come to you. They'll warn you about something or they'll get on you about something you're doing. And next thing you know, you reject that. You don't understand that the Most High sent that man to sit up there. When Saul dealt with, when, uh, when the Most High was dealing with Saul, how he was dealing with Saul through who? Through Samuel, through the prophet. But some of y'all, they think the Lord dealing directly with them. They got the conversation. You get the hell. Why come you get to have the conversation with the Lord, but the person traveling the whole damn earth, you know what I'm saying, Moses. going to camp 100 days straight, brothers 365 out here now, you know what I'm saying, putting in all the work for the most high, you ain't doing a damn thing, but the Lord working with you, though. But the ones who out here doing all the work, the Lord decided to say, you know what, I'm skip the brothers, all these brothers that's laboring in the truth, putting their life on the line with me. I'm going to go holler at this person that ain't doing no work at all, that ain't keeping the commandments, and I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to tell y'all something about y'all's dreams, too. Give me that real quick and do that number 13. I had to uh, cut, a, uh, cut a dude to death with this one when we was in Grenada because he got to say, I see visions, I have dreams. I said, bro, you know what? You might be right. You might see them dreams and them visions, and you be like, and I know we don't have to keep the law. I said, watch this, I'm gonna show you this. Read this real quick. Do the other 13 and three. God is talking to him. God is the revealing to him. I don't gotta keep the law. This is what dude said on the radio station up there. I pulled this on him right here. Listen to this. Do the other 13, verse, I'm gonna get straight to the point. Verse 4. Listen to this. Deuteronomy chapter 13 and verse 4. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God. Let's go and start at verse 1. Read. Verse 1. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign of the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods. We don't have to keep the commandments. God gave me a vision. Read on. Which thou hast not known. And let us serve them. Because guess what? It's only one way to serve God. How do you serve God? I need the precept. Give me the precepts, uh, your honor. Deuteronomy 10 and 12. Deuteronomy 10 and 12. That's how you show, this how you serve the Lord. Read it real quick. Deuteronomy 10 and 12. The book of Deuteronomy, yeah. chapter 10 and verse 12. And now Israel. What doth the Lord thy God require of thee? What do God require you, Israel? You the Israelites, read. But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God. And to serve the Lord thy God, read on. With all thy heart and with all thy soul. To, to do what, read? To keep the commandments. This is how you serve God. To keep his commandments, read on. Of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. For your good. Go back to where we was at. So now you got somebody having these dreams, God talking to them, whatever, whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? They say, now they're telling you, we'll have to keep the commandments. God gave me this in the dream. Or God told me this in the dream. I don't have to do this because God is telling me this in the dream. Listen to this. It might not be God. I'm telling you now. You might have, you have any dreams. You have any dreams. The scriptures say you have any dreams, but it ain't God that's giving you these dreams. Read up. I'm going to tell you that. 13 and 3. 
Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. So you hear what the Lord told us now. Don't hearken to the words of that prophet. Ain't no prophet ever came on this earth and told our people not to keep the commandments. It ain't there. You ain't find it. You ain't sinned. Every prophet that ever came, get that in Nehemiah chapter 9 real quick. Every prophet that ever came always came to get our people to repent and come back to the law, statutes, and commandments. 9 verse 26, Nehemiah. The book of Nehemiah chapter 9. Verse 26. And verse 26. I think it's 26. Nevertheless, they were disobedient and rebelled against thee and cast thy law behind their backs and slew thy prophets which testified against them. Every prophet that came came to testify against the people. Uh, hold on, I think you might need to start at 25. You beat me there. Hold on, let me see it. Let me look at it real quick. I need to look at it. Nehemiah 9. Yeah, let's see it. Read that again. Nehemiah 9 and verse 26. Nevertheless, they were disobedient. The day is talking about the Israelites. Something about you, our forefathers. Read on. And rebelled against thee. And they, you rebelled against God. Read. And cast thy law behind their back. They see them doing it to this day. We don't have to keep the law. You throw the law behind your back. You got this one like Camp's teaching. You don't have to keep the laws of God. To this day. Still rebelling against the Lord. Read on. And slew thy prophets. And they did what to the prophets? And slew thy prophets. And they killed the prophets which did what? Which testified against them to turn them to thee. And they wrought great provocation. Every prophet that came sat up there and came and tried to get the people to turn back to the ways of the Lord. Ain't not one prophet ever told you, go against the ways of God. Find them prophets. Read them. Verse 27. Therefore thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies, who vexed them. And in the time of their trouble, when they cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven. And according to thy manifold mercies, thou gavest them saviors who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. You know, it's another precept. What scripture precepts with uh, Nehemiah 9, 26? Give me a precept. Uh, nah, you got to raise your hand, bro. Uh, uh, Bezalel, what's up, bro? Uh, Acts 7 and 52. Acts 7, 51. Sorry, 51. Acts 7 and 51 is the precepts. Ain't no prophet never came and said you don't have to keep the laws of God. Then we're going to go back to Deuteronomy 13, then I'm going to stick back with trying to not to uh, go off track too much. Acts chapter 7, verse 51. And you got anybody tell you you don't have to keep the laws. They don't even got the spirit on them, period. I'm just going to tell y'all the truth, y'all. It's just simple as that. No prophet ever going to tell you, no spiritual man. That's the works of the flesh. I, I'm, I, I go in the store the other day to get a uh, get some eggs, and I come out, and you know Jehovah Witness waiting on me, and you know I try to be patient with them and deal with them righteously. You know what I'm saying? So I, I got way better than what I was. I be trying to get them to repent and uh and to convert. So I'm telling the sister we got to keep God laws. She telling me no, uh -uh, we don't have to keep God laws no more. That's the old test. So I'm like, well, look, you you, you don't even need to be out here. Preaching this word. So I'm asking this sister a bunch of questions and she can't answer nothing. And she even got to the point that she got so rude and she was talking to me while I eat chips at the same time. I said, I said, so this how you go, I said, this how you gonna sit up there and, and, and show forth what you learned within the word of God, you eating while I'm talking, you know what I'm saying? And she said something to me, it was it was kind of smart. And I'm like, you call me over here. <laughs> you call me over here. But that's the point right there. How people going to miss a blessing through their own foolishness, man? The prophet's back on earth right now to get you to turn back to the laws of God. I don't have to say I'm a prophet. The leadership don't have to say they prophets. You're going to know a, purple, uh, a person a prophet through their works. You know what I'm saying? That stuff going to be manifest. But when you sit up there... And you trying to explain to somebody, and I'm like, this sister don't even know who she talking to right now. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy as hell. And I'm trying to get, but they think they're going to teach me the word. That's why, I like, this, this new day and age, man, it's a blessing that this, you know what I'm saying? It's a blessing that this word is growing and spread like this. Because now you got these folks, they going door to door. They knocking on the wrong door. I seen a video of uh, uh, Jehovah's Witness knocked on another brother door. In the mm -hmm. truth. And the brother was just cutting them up. And I'm like, man, he owned them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Deacon, Deacon then was in California. They knocked on that door. Bam, it was on again. 
So they doing it. So now the truth out. And now they getting exposed for their lies. They getting exposed for not knowing the Bible. You got people saying, no, we do got to keep the law. Uh-uh, no. Jesus Christ is black according to this scripture. No, you the true Israelites according to this scripture. It made me think about that pastor. We went and set up in the church like two months ago. This dude told me it was going to be his second service. He lied to me. It might was going to be his second service at that church. But this dude had been preaching over 10 years. So I called the brother to check up on him. And the brother, you know what I'm saying, I asked him, like, how ain't thing going, man? Look, have you been taking heed to the word of God? The first thing he told me that some of his people is offended from the title of the video that I put up. Because I put pastor, uh, no, prophets warn pastors such and such. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, what's the problem with it? Every prophet that it ever came always warned the people to turn back towards the word of God. But the point is what I want to say. If you look at the video, as I go through there, he don't know none of the history. He don't know the scriptures. It is what it is. He don't know the scriptures. I'm explaining this stuff. He's like, no, nah, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. You don't know. You know what I'm saying? Y'all just don't understand, man. We're in that day and hour now where you say you believe in the Bible. You say that Nehemiah, when you read the book of Nehemiah, you read about a prophet. When you read Elders, you read about the prophets. When you read Obadiah, when you read the first five books of Moses, when you read these books, you read about the prophets. These books is named after the prophets. And you say you believe the Bible, but you think that the most I ain't sending them back now? Y'all got to be bugged the hell out. I'm just telling you the truth. Go and read that in Acts 7 and 51. So Nehemiah 9 and 26 say the same thing as Acts 7 and 51. Some of y'all too puffed up, proud, and prideful. Just stay down, humble yourself, and stay in your place. Because, Lord, when you do make it to those pearly gates in the kingdom of heaven, you'll really get to see who was sitting in front of you the whole time. You know what I'm saying? Who was the men that was out here risking their lives, putting in the work? You're going to really see who they was in the spirit. You're going to see that uh, somebody in, in Carolina camp was probably Nehemiah. One of the brothers in uh, Alabama camp might be Ezra's. Or whatever. You might see that we got one of the 12 apostles amongst this camp. Read what you got. Acts chapter 7 and verse 51. Ye stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You said, you stiff neck, uncircumcised in heart and ears. Read up. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. You always resist the Holy Ghost. He said the same thing in Nehemiah 9. Read up. As your fathers did, so do ye. He said the same way your fathers did, you doing it now. Read on. Which of the prophets have your fathers persecuted? You remember, you, you remember what he said, and they testified against them, and they slew the prophets? I mean, I mean, uh, it said they slew the prophets, they testified against them to turn them back to the way of the Lord. Now he's saying right here, which of the prophets have not your fathers Persecuted, read on. And they have slain them which showed before the coming of the just one. And they, and they slain him which have showed before the coming of the just one. The just one is Christ, read on. Of whom ye have been now the betrayers and, and murderers. And now you betrayed and murdered him too. They killed John the Baptist. Hell, they killed Christ. You know what I'm saying? They killed all the prophets. <coughs> Excuse me. Now look, let's go back. So now, uh, what was that? So Deuteronomy 13, and let's wrap it up. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 13, and verse 3. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. So he said, don't hearken, hearken to the words of that prophet. Read on. Or that dreamer of dreams. Or that dreamer of dreams. Read. For the Lord your God proveth you. Because the, the Lord proving you. You're going to have people come amongst you. I'm having dreams and this, that, and that. God just proving you to see. Hey, you remember that brother in uh, Nashville? Talking about how he was having dreams, he was speaking in tongues, and the oh, most yeah. I told him this and that and that. Now this brother, I heard this, he don't even believe in Christ no more. That's, that's the brother that was that closed his eyes and was writing. Yeah, yeah, he said he was speaking in tongues. Book of the book of the Bible. And he closed his eyes and he just wrote everything down, and it was real words on paper. Come on, man, sit down somewhere. Man, look, for real, cut it out. Now he don't even believe in Christ no more. So how the hell you go? You, I'm telling you, people be having... Demons on them. Freedom. To know whether you love the Lord your God. The most I just tested you to see if you love him or not. Read up. With all your heart and with all your soul. 
You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. Read up. And the prophet or that dreamer of dreams. He said that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. Read up. Shall be put to death. They're going to get put to death. They're going to die. Read up. Because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God. Why? We spoke to turn. I had a dream. And then you come and tell your dream the tongues you speaking to turn somebody away from the Lord God. You gonna get put to death, freedom. Which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. Even to thrust you out of the way that God commanded you to walk in. Read. So shall thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. He said, so shall you put the evil. That evil gotta put, get, be put away. God was like, yeah, let's see. Right now in this day of time, we can't put you to death. But we show in the hell to throw you out there to save. We can't put you to death. It is what it is. But man, look, when the Lord gives us our power back, you come with them dreams, that's your ass. Excuse my language. <laughs> All right, here we go. So now look, so y'all got to understand, man, when Saul disobeyed the Lord, the spirit left him and came upon David. Get there in the first seven, sixteen, and 13. That's, a, that's where I started, y'all. Start with your disobedience to God. The spirit starts to leave you. You start with your own thoughts. Get there real quick with your own thoughts, too, because that's what uh, Proverbs 3 and 5. Everybody think they got their own thoughts. You're supposed to come back as a baby. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to come back as a baby to the Most High when you step into this truth. Not come with your own mind. You, ain't have, you don't got no mind. For real, if you didn't get, if you weren't being taught right now, or if you never heard this truth, some of y'all still be doing the same weakness that you was always doing. I know I would have. For real, I'm a student up in this thing. I learned, man, I don't sit up there. I ain't never challenged the leadership since I've been up in this truth. For real, I ain't never come to the leadership. Well, I think this and I, nah, I don't think nothing. <laughs> I don't think for myself right now. I keep the commandments. As long as you're telling me to go against the commandments of God and I read it and I see it's on paper, we there. If it's something that I understand, I sit back and wait till God give me the understanding. There's been plenty of stuff that I ain't understand. That I ain't understand Isaiah 56 when I first heard it. I'm like, nah, this can't be right. And I even heard them break it down. And then you know why I ain't understand it? Because it was still iniquity in me that needed to be purged out. As soon as I purged out that iniquity, guess what? Bang, the light turned on. I'm like, whoa. I'm like, yeah, this is right. Now imagine if I was a straight nigga and be like, nah, this wrong, man. You bring it out. out. Oh, oh, oh. And then try to challenge the leadership. Already in, 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 still dealing with seeing myself. Then I'd be looking like a nut in front of them. But I sit back, I be quiet, and I hear my peace. And then I got the understanding of it. The next thing you know, I made a video breaking down Isaiah 56. I read that real quick. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3 and verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not into thy own understanding. Quit leaning to your own understanding. Quit having your own thoughts. Go to your, sometimes a man's mind want to tell them more than seven watchmen that sit on the tower. Give it in the first seven, sixteen, 16 to 13. All you need to do is concentrate on the commandments. If we try to get you to break the commandments, that's what that's uh that, that's the problem. I mean, that's when you sit up there and you be like, hey, look, I gotta go. These dudes wicked. Dude told me to buy on the Sabbath. I'm out. For real. Oh no, they telling me that I can wear pants and dress in some leggings and walk around the show. Then that's when you need to run, sis. For real. We telling you to take it off, that's when you run. As long as we tell you to put it on the cover up, you need to be clapping us up. Because you got a whole bunch of whoremongers that was in this room. That if they were still in wickedness, they'd love for you to come up in here strutting your stuff and wear the tightest dress and wear the tightest pants and, and whistle at you and tell you how thick he is. Read what you got. First Samuel chapter 16 and verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his breath. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from the day forth. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. So at first, Saul had the Spirit of the Lord on. Let's see what happened to the Spirit of the Lord. Now David getting anointed with the Spirit of the Lord. Read verse 14. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. It departed from Saul. Why? It all started with his disobedience to the commandments. Read on. And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Now I'm going to show you what happened when the spirit departs from you. 
Now look, when the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, was he still in the congregation of the Lord, yes or no? Was he still in the congregation of the Lord? Yes. Yeah, he was still king. Look, I'm going to show you something. Get this first Corinthians, I mean first Samuel 18 and 7. And this one, the reason why I'm doing this class today, because I want y'all to just sit back and reflect and ask yourself, like, hello, I've been here such, such, such a time, or I've been here this, that, and that, and that. And I want you to sit back and I want you to reflect and ask yourself after this class, man, have the Spirit of the Lord departed from me? <laughs> ask yourself that. I want you to examine yourself. That goes for everybody. Everybody up in here. Because I know how some of y'all think, oh, Cap talking about me. Cap ain't thinking about you. You be thinking people thinking about you when they ain't thinking about you. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I say. Sometimes a man's mind want to tell him more than seven watchmen on the, sitting on the top. Man, Cap doing this class about me. Man, Cap ain't thinking about you. For real. First Samuel 18 and 7. Listen to this. First Samuel 18 and verse 7. And the woman answered one another in the, as they So hold on, hold on, hold on. So the spirit of Saul, the spirit, the spirit of the Lord left Saul. Listen, listen, look. When the spirit of left for, uh, Lord left Saul, one of the first things that he got on him was an envious spirit. Listen, read. Verse 7. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very wroth, and the sayings displeased him. And he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day and forth. You hear that? He eyed him from that day forth. The en envious spirit jumped on. That's the work of the flesh. We just get that real quick in Matthew 7 and 21. He eyed him from that spirit of the Lord and left him. Now he envious. Now he got an evil eye. That's what I'm saying. Y'all got to watch it. You get to breaking the commandments of God. Next thing you know, you have an evil eye. Then an envious spirit come on you. Then I'm show you, I'm show you an order that you can go in. You don't have to go in that same disorder. Well, I'm gonna show you the type of spirits that you can get on you. Read what you got. In the congregation. You can be sitting in the congregation right here, right now. Spirits go. Read up. The book of Mark, chapter 7, and verse 21. Read. For from within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts. Evil thoughts. Read up. Adultery. Adultery. Fornications. Murders. Thefts. Covetousness. Wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye. Evil eye. Read on. Blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. They say it come from within and defile the man. For real. Why? Because this is your thought process. Now, anytime you see that brother or sister, you looking at them, you got that evil eye towards them. You trying to find some type of evil, some type of mischief, or some type of whatever. The spirit leaving you. It's already gone. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 11. That's just like if a brother came in every week and I had that evil eye. I'm trying to find something on him. I'm coming to your house. Hey, this brother right there is this, that, that, and that. I don't got nothing good to say about him. You already know the spirit leaving me. Instead of saying, trying to build the brother up. Our job is to build each other up, not to tear each other down up in here. Read uh, 1 Samuel 18. So pick back up and start at 10. 1 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 10. So look, after that evil eye came upon him, listen to this, read. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul. See that? He still got that damn devil on him, read. And he prophesied in the midst of the house, and David played with his hand, as at other times. But there was a javelin in Saul's hand. So now Saul got a javelin, read. And Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite David. Even to the wall with it. So he sat up there and threw this thing while this man playing the heart. He playing the heart to calm his evil spirit down. He had sat up there and threw the javelin at him, tried to kill him. Read on, but not just once. Listen to this, read on. And David avoided out of his presence twice. So now he, look, this dude has become so envious of uh, David. He trying to kill him now. Now that spirit of hatred and murder popped up on Now... He should have sit up there. He could have been applying the scriptures. When you don't, that's why I said walk in the spirit. You ain't going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Flesh, give me Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. The 
book of Leviticus, chapter 19, and verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor, and not suffer sin upon him. You, that? you don't supposed to have hatred upon your brother. But he broke that law. What's another law he broke? Get that in Exodus real quick. About that evil eye. Let me see. Uh, hold on. Go to, let me see, let me see. I'm going to go to 1 John on this one. Uh, chapter 2, verse 15. Read that. 1 John, chapter 2, and verse 15. <laughs> Love not the world, not the things that are in the world. Read. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, the, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, and the pride of life, is not of the Father. It ain't of the Father. Read on. But it's of the world. Their pride got to them. Their lust of the flesh, their lust of the eye. He seen all the women running out to Samuel. Oh man, look! I mean, come running out to David. Saul killed this thousands. But David killed these 10,000, thousand thousand. Hey, you know how women is. They can hype it up, man. They can hype it up. For real, though. So, look, now he got that envious spirit on him. You know what I'm saying? That, that devil jumped on. He got that evil eye towards his brother. That evil eye started to manifest hatred. That hatred started to manifest murder. Because remember, get that in First John 3 and 15. Say right where you had one over. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 15. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. You hear that? When the next thing you know, that hatred manifests, now it's murder. Give me that in Exodus real quick about not coveting. Verse uh, 17. Exodus 3 and verse 17. Okay, I ain't going to lose that. I'm going to come back. Go to 1 Samuel 18, verse 20 now. Now, I want to deal with this right here. I'm going to show you. Now, I'm going to start with verse, uh, let's keep reading all down. Start it back at 12. 1 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 12. And Saul was afraid of David. So now he's afraid of David. For what? Read him. Because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. That's what be wrong with some people. The Lord don't be with you. The Lord was somebody else. And now you're, you're afraid because the spirit didn't left you. Some of y'all don't even be knowing the spirit that left you. I'm trying to show you ways to let you know that the spirit is left you or is leaving you. Read up. Therefore Saul removed him from, from him and made him captain over a thousand. And he went out and came in before the people. Now look, he ain't make him over no captain over a thousand because he was like, look, uh, I'm going to give you some rank, David. Here go, you go. I'm going to put you over a thousand in. I'm going to show you why he made him captain over a thousand. Read on. And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways. And the Lord was with him. The Lord was with him. Why? He behaved wisely. He continued in the commandments of God. But the spirit that left Saul, what he doing? All manner of wickedness. And what does wickedness start to do? Manifest. Your wickedness starts to manifest through your thought process. Read on. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David because he went out and came in before them. So he was a captain. He was going out, putting in the work, and coming back in before him. Read on. And Saul said to David, Behold, my elder daughter, Marab, her will I give thee to what? So oh, look, hold on, hold on. So listen to this. He said, look, I'm going to give you my elder daughter to wife. Only do what? Only be thou valiant for me. And fight the Lord's battles. He said, be valiant for me. Just go out and fight the Lord's battles. Read on. For Saul said, let not my hand be upon he him. He said, don't let my hand be upon him. Read on. But let the hand of the Philistines be upon you him. You see that? He made a captain of a thousand, gave him his daughter, sent him out there and said, look, you go fight the battles of the war. You be the head of the army out here. You know what I'm saying? Because look, I ain't going to kill him. Let the uh, Philistines kill him. You see that right there? Y'all see the, the evil that's manifesting uh, 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 through Saul since the spirit of the Lord had departed from him? But look, but look, keep going though, keep going. Verse 18. This dude Saul right here, he was just completely out of the spirit. He was gone. And that's what happened when you be out of the spirit. You start to do all types of crazy stuff around. You start to do all types of crazy stuff and it started to manifest. It started to manifest. Read up. And David said unto Saul, 
Who am I? And what is my life or my father, father's family in Israel that I should be son-in-law to the king? So he was like, look, look he stayed humble. Humility, that's what? Walking in the spirit, being humble. Now, y'all see what I'm doing. I'm showing you, you know, the difference from when you're out the spirit and when you're in the spirit. When you're in the spirit, you stay humble. When you're in the spirit, you're applying the laws of God. When you're out of the spirit, hell, no. Nah, uh -uh. It's everything against what God, the way of the Lord. Uh, every, it's everything against the ways that you, uh, God set up for you to walk. Freedom. But it came to pass at the time when Merab Saul's daughter should have been given to David, that she was given unto Adriel, the Maholathite, Mah to what? So he was being deceitful too. Why? Because this dude got the devil on him. He ain't in the spirit. Read up. And, and Michael, Saul's daughter, loved David. And they, they told Saul, and the thing pleased him. So his other daughter loved David, and it pleased him. Read up. And Saul said, I will give him her, that she may be a snare to him. So look, he said, look, I'm going to give him, so she can be a snare to him. I'm going to give his daughter, take him out. She's going to be a snare to him. And then read on. And that the hand of the Philistines be, may be against him. So he was trying to, he, he wanted to use his daughters against David to bring David down. Read on. Wherefore Saul said to David, thou shalt this day be my son-in-law. In the one of the twain. And Saul commanded his servant, saying, Commune with David secretly, and say, Behold, the king hath delighted thee, and all his servants love thee. Now therefore be the king's son in law. Read on. And Saul's servant spake those words in the ears of David. And David said, Seemeth it to you a light thing to be a king's son in law? Seeing that I am a poor man and lightly esteemed. That's what y'all don't understand. Think about this. David came from the bottom. He started at the bottom. He, uh, the most I put the spirit on him. Next thing you know, he became a captain. Then that dude became king of all Israel. He started at the bottom. You know what I'm saying? That's why I say the Lord look upon the lowly to set up. All right, go from there. Now, I want to drop that real quick. Uh, let me see, let me see. Uh, so, give me that Leviticus 19, verse 11. Because Saul was being deceitful. He was being deceitful. He didn't want to give his daughters to make him really his son-in-law. He was trying to give his daughters to David to do what? To get them killed. Why? Because the spirit, the spirit ain't left from him. 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 33. Now, look, I'm going to show you how wicked. Hold on, now, I missed something. I missed something. Before we go there, go to uh, 1 Samuel 19, verse 1. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 19, and verse 1. And Saul spake to Jonathan, his son, and to all his servants that they should kill David. So, look, he told his son and his servants, look, you need to kill David. But listen to this, read. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David. And Jonathan told David. He went and told David, saying, read. Saying, Saul, my father, seeketh to kill thee. That's what you're supposed to do. The scriptures say, thou shalt not what? Kill. Jonathan was in the spirit. For real. If Jonathan wasn't in the spirit, then guess what? He would have been like, all right, we're going to go kill him. But guess what? The Lord was with David anyway. You can't take David life if the Lord ain't with him. Read on. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take heed to thyself until the morning. And abide in a secret place and hide thyself. What's that, John? Uh, don't stand against the blood of thy neighbor. Let me look at this real quick. Go to Exodus 23. <laughs> How long before you read it? Let me look at it. Let me make sure. Exodus. Stand against blood. Exodus 23, verse 1. Exodus 23, verse 1. Let me see something. Let me check something out. I ain't here hearing a uh, wow. I think this is Leviticus 19. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leviticus 19 and 16. See? Jonathan in the spirit. Listen to this. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 16. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Read on. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. So when your neighbor's life is in life is in, is, is spread, the Lord said don't stand idle. That's just like me. I know somebody 
finna come and do some to Zephaniah. You know what I gotta, I was supposed to tell Zephaniah, hey bro, they plotting to take you out. You know what I'm saying? You gotta get the hell up out of here. That's what Jonathan did. He's walking in the spirit of God, applying the laws. That's what you're supposed to do. In the hood, they call it, you know, don't snitch. Snitches get snitch. Snitches get snitches. You they sat up there and cooked up a whole plot. How they gonna kick in the brother dough down the street? The, the whole plot, you know what I'm saying? Look, we're kicking his kicking his dough. We're gonna take all this money. If he give, if he moves sudden, he gonna kill him. You know, you know what I'm saying? Next thing you know, they kill him, and somebody heard all that and didn't say nothing. And then you wonder, like, now nah, when they come back around, when something happened, now they come and look for you. Cause you know what happened when you out of the spirit. The most high, most, look, I was thinking about it. I was, um, I was watching some stuff. Um, and, and I think it was about the Lorenzo Wright. How she looked 10 years ago before uh, Lorenzo Wright died. Y'all see how she looked? The sister wasn't bad looking, you know? Sister looked kind of good. She wasn't bad or none of that, I don't think. I, I didn't see all her pictures, but I know she wasn't looking bad. Y'all see her now? Woo! Man, that's how you know. Man, the Lord been afflicting that spirit. She was, Lord been afflicted that spirit so bad to where well, she just let everything go. See, you think you can go out here and do something and get away with it. You know what I'm saying? The Lord sit up there and afflict that spirit. She ain't even had to do it. But just having something to do with it been troubling the hell out of her. It's been troubling her to the point that this sister don't even look the same no more. The spirit didn't live. I ain't going to say the spirit was never on her. But the Lord, look, whatever spirit that was in her and left her, you could just tell this sister just gone, zumbing the hell out. Read Leviticus 19 and 16 again. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 16. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. You hear that? You don't supposed to stand against the blood of your neighbor. Your brother life is danger. You're supposed to warn him. That's the law. That's the law. Jonathan did that. Jonathan was loyal. That's why the scriptures talk about a faithful friend. That's why I always talk to your brothers about loyal. We need loyal brothers up in this joint, man. For real. Get that in uh, real quick in uh, 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 Proverbs real quick. Chapter 17, verse uh, 20. Is it 18 and 24? Yeah, 18 and 24. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24. A man that has friends must show himself friendly. Read on. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. That's who Jonathan was. Jonathan was that friend that stuck closer than a brother. He knew his daddy was out the spirit, wicked as hell. He's like, hey, my daddy want to kill you. And what he do? That man was in the spirit. He went and warned David, man. For real. That's, a, that's loyalty right there. Get that in uh, uh, Proverbs 17 and 17. The book of Proverbs, chapter 17 and verse 17. A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. You hear that? A brother was born for adversity. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Lord, Jonathan was born for that time right there to make sure that he was being loyal to David. You know what I'm saying? He was born for that adversity. Because Saul tried to kill him several times after that. And by the fact, Saul was so wicked. Go to uh, what we was just reading. Go, go back to 1 Samuel chapter 19 real quick and read verse 1. 1 Samuel 19 verse 1. And Saul spake to Jonathan his son and to all his servants that they should kill David. But Jonathan Saul's son delighted much in David. And Jonathan told David saying, Saul my father seeketh to kill thee. He said, look, my dad is seeking to kill you. Read on. Now therefore I pray thee, Take heed to thyself until the morning, and abide in a secret place, and hide thyself. He said, hide yourself. That's why, I go, go to Ecclesiastes 6. I was jumping ahead. Y'all was moving ahead too far. Too far. Verse 14. Just dealing with being loyal, man. That's why I, one thing I want to push this on you, brothers, man. Stay loyal. Stay loyal in this truth, man. For real. We got a job to do. We're gonna be loyal to each other. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody turning us against each other and, and uh against the laws of God. You know what I'm saying? Look, we, we in this thing together, let's get the kingdom together. For real. You got something you don't understand, be patient and let the most high spirit work through you. 
After a certain amount of time, you'll get your answer. Then hell leave. It's simple as that. You know what I'm saying? Don't leave. Speak of the evil. Just go. Sirach 6 and 14. The book of Sirach chapter 6 and verse 14. A faithful friend is a strong defense. You yeah, had a faithful, that's who, uh, that, that, that's who Jonathan was, that lawyer friend, that strong defense. Because Saul wanted to kill David. And he said he's trying to send his son and his servants to do it. Read. And he that hath found such a one hath found a treasure. He said when you find a lawyer friend, you found a treasure. Read on. Nothing to cut, uh, counter, what's that? Countervail. Countervail a faithful friend. Nothing can go against a faithful friend. Read on. And his excellency is unvaluable. You hear that? Their loyalty is unvaluable. Read on. A faithful friend is the medicine of life. And they that fear the Lord shall find it. You hear that? You fear the Lord. That's where you get that loyal friend. Go back to where you was at. Uh, First Samuel. First Samuel. 19, 19, verse 10 now. Verse 10. And Saul sought to smite David, even to the wall with the javelin. But he slipped away out of Saul's presence. So Saul was trying to kill him again. Then on top of that, listen to this, read on. And he smote the javelin into the wall, and David fled and escaped that night. Saul also sent messengers unto David's house to watch him and to slay him in the morning. Now he sent him messengers to watch him and slay him in the morning. Read on. And Michelle, David's wife, told him, saying, If thou save not thy life tonight, Tomorrow thou shalt be slain. This woman really loved him. Her, uh, Jonathan loved uh, Jonathan loved David and Michelle, Jonathan's daughter. She loved him. She was like, look, hey, if thou save not thy life tonight, tomorrow that day you're going to be killed. Read on. So Michelle let David down through a window. So she let him down through the window like, look, you got to go and go, husband. I love you. Read. And he went and fled and escaped. And Michelle took an image and laid it in the bed and put a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster and covered it with a cloth. Hey, look, this woman right here, she wasn't no joke. She was like, you know what? I'm going to make a fake man laying down in the bed, you know, so when they come. You know how when somebody put a, put a fake, set up the pillow right there and act like they're laying in the bed? You know what I'm saying? This is what that sister did. Read up. Now, notice what she used goat hair. <laughs> she used that thick sheep hair. <laughs> I didn't have it her, man. You know what I'm saying? Read. She used, let me be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and when Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, he is sick. Look at that. This sister like, look, I'm going to stand up for my husband. Get that real quick about a righteous woman. This sister was in the spirit. You know what I'm saying? Go to Ecclesiastes real quick, chapter 26. I'm going to show you something about a faithful friend and a faithful woman. Get that Ecclesiastes, chapter 26. Uh, let me see. Let's start at, um, and, uh, I don't want three. Is it three? Yeah, let's read, let's read, uh, let's start at one. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 26 and verse 1. Blessed is the man that hath a virtuous wife, for the number of his days shall be done. A virtuous woman rejoiced in her husband. You see that she rejoiced in her husband. She, rejoiced, she had delight in David. A virtuous woman got delight in their husband. A virtuous woman ain't gonna hate their husband. You talking about you virtuous, but you hate your husband. Hell no. Nah. Read on. And he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. Just to say he's going to fulfill the years of his life in peace. Read on. A good wife is a good portion, which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. Okay, now look, let me find the one. What the one that they say uh, a strong woman or a faithful uh, 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 is a tower of defense to a husband? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Sisters, y'all are supposed to know this. Uh, let me see. Tower of defense, a faithful woman. Alright, 26 and now. Uh, 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 that's it. Sirach 26 and 22. Here you go. That's it. Read. Sirach 26 and 22. And harlot shall be accounted as spittle. You know that, you sisters, y'all want to play the whole? God said you're going to be counted as spittle. Read. But a married woman, a married is, a, woman is what? Is a tower against death to her husband. See, that was this sister Michelle, Michelle right here. Okay, now let's go back to where we was at. She was a tower defense against death to her husband. So look, I just like reading the story again. Start back at uh, verse uh, 12. Verse 12. So Michelle let David down through a window, and he went and fled and escaped. And Michelle took an image and laid it in the bed and put a pillow of goat's hair 
for his bolster and covered it with a cloth. Read. And when Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, he is sick. Look, he's sick. Read on. And Saul sent the messengers again to see David, saying, bring him up to me in the bed that I may slay him. Read on. And when the messengers were come in, behold, there was an image in the bed with a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster. Now listen to this read. And Saul said unto Michelle, why hast thou deceived me? Why you deceive me? Read on. So and sit away my enemy. So look at that. See, that's what I'm saying. When the spirit leaves you, you think the brother that loves you, your enemy. You think the sister that loves you is your enemy. You want to know why? The spirit is gone. Read on. That he is escaped. And Michelle answered Saul. He said unto me, let me go. Why should I kill thee? Read. So David fled and escaped and came to Samuel to Ramah and told him all that Saul had done to him. And he and Samuel went and dwelt at Naoth. And it was told Saul, saying, Behold, David is at Naoth in Ramah. So, all right, I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to jump over to 1 Samuel chapter 20. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I'm going I'm to switch the whole subject in a minute. 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse... 33. So now y'all know that uh, David, he did have the chance to kill Saul, right? But he uh, he, spurred, he spurred Saul's life. And uh, y'all y'all can read the rest of the story y'all see. And uh, David and Jonathan were so loyal to each other that they ended up making another covenant. You know what I'm saying? They made a covenant. David was like, look, I'm going to stay loyal. I ain't turning against you even though my father's heat. They, they never broke their bond. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm going to get to some. I'm going to show you how evil Saul is. 1 Samuel 20, verse 33. 1 Samuel 20, verse 32. Start at 32. Verse 32. And Jonathan answered Saul, his father, and said unto him, Wherefore shall he be slain? Why you want to kill David? What have he done? What David had done to you? He did nothing to him. He did nothing. All the only thing was the spirit and left him. Read on. And Saul That's answered. That's why you, you wonder why. Why they got so much hatred for this brother? Why they got hate you for this sister? Why they got hate you for this brother? That's because the spirit ain't left you. People like, well, hey, I ain't done nothing. I ain't did nothing to this brother. I ain't did nothing evil to him. I ain't did this. I don't know why I can have hate you for one of y'all up in here. You've been had to commit a dud trick. Uh, yeah, you've been had to uh, try to kill, probably even kill. You could kill somebody up in here or something like that. Man, look, other than that, it ain't nothing to hate you about. Oh, man, brother called me outside my name. I'm the hell I'm hate you for that, brother. Brand don't hate you for you for that. You know what I'm saying? Do some stuff that's unforgivable. <laughs> that God said you'd get put to death. Commit adultery with a brother wife. Then I see why a brother I want to have some hatred for you and kill your dad. The scriptures talk about the spirit of jealousy. You know what I'm saying? The scriptures talk about a man getting put to death for that. You know what I'm saying? Kill somebody child up in here. You probably get put to death for that. The scriptures always spoke about the avenger of blood. How many of y'all read about the avenger of blood? You know what I'm saying? For real. The avenge of blood was somebody coming to avenge your death. You know what I'm saying? It's different stuff. It's stuff in the Bible you read about that. That's why Lord like like, this word of death. But read this real quick. Read on. Verse 33. And Saul cast a javelin at him to smite him. Who he threw the javelin at this time? Saul. So. Saul was flicked with that javelin, was it? That's how you know the spirit left him, because when, when he was fighting the war in them armies, man, he was a beast. He was killing his thousands and thousands. But when he sat up there and the spirit left him, every time he threw the javelin, he missed. <laughs> I mean, he had no spirit up in him then. Read on. Whereby Jonathan knew that it was determined of his father to slay David. So Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger and did eat no meat the second day of the month. For he was grieved for David because his father had done him shame. Yeah, yeah, he was grieved for David because his father had done him shame. I'm going to show you one more dirty act that your boy Saul did when the spirit left him. First Samuel chapter 22, verse 11. I hope y'all, none of y'all brothers never come this far when the spirit leave you. I hope you never die. Look, this is our own brother. This is our own brother. Remember the scripture says Saul became David's enemy continually. Continually. This is own brother. And that's what I'm saying, man. The spirit been and left you, and you don't even know. You still be walking around like hell. But your, your actions show that the spirit of God ain't upon you. 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 11. 1 Samuel 22, verse 11. 
Then the king sent to call Ahimelech the priest, the son of Ahitub, and all his father's house. So now here go Saul. He had called the priest, all his father's house. Read on. And all his father's house, the priests that were in Nob, and they came, all of them, to the king. And Saul said, Hear now, thou son of Ahitub. And he answered, Here I am, my lord. And Saul said unto him, Why have ye conspired against me? So now this dude right here, he's thinking all types of evil thoughts. Why you conspired against me? Now he delusional as hell. The spirit is completely gone. He think everybody against him now. Read on. Thou and the this is what happens when you ain't walking in the spirit. Applying the laws when the situation comes forth. Read on. Thou and the son of Jesse, and that thou hast given him bread, and a sword, and hast inquired of God for him, that he should rise against me to lie in wait as at this day. Then Ahimelech answered the king and said, And who is so faithful among all thy servants as David, which is the king's son-in-law, and goeth at thy bidding, and is honorable in thy house? Oh, he said, No, I ain't conspired to spy against you. He was like, Who's so faithful among all your servants as David? which is the king's son-in-law, that goeth at thy bidding and is honorable in your house. He's like, hey, this is an honorable man. Read on. Did I then begin to inquire of God for him? He said, did I then begin to inquire of God for him when he was a faithful among your servants and became your son-in-law and he did all your business and he was honorable in your house? Read. Be it far from me. Let not the king impute anything unto his servant. He's like, look, don't be imputing anything to his uh, to me. For real, don't be sitting up here lying on me and saying I'm conspiring against you. Read on. Nor to all the house of my father. Read. For thy servant knew nothing of all this, less or more. He said, we didn't know nothing. What, you, what, what was going on between y'all? Read on. And the king said, thou shalt surely die. So he said, look, you know what, Amalek, you going to die. Read. Amalek, thou and all thy father's house. I'm going to show you how evil this brother got. Read on. And the king said unto the footman that stood about him, turn and slay the priest of the Lord. He said, slay the priest of the Lord. This dude got so evil, he started to kill the priest of the Lord. Read on. Because their hand also is with David. Read. And because they knew when he fled and did not show it to me. But the servants of the king would not put forth their hand to fall upon the priest of the Lord. Look, even the servants knew some stuff what not to do. Like, nah, uh-uh. We ain't finna kill these priests. Read on. And the king said to Doeg. Look what he did, y'all. This how evil he got. This, look, look. This how we can, who know this story, what you're about to read? You know what he finna do. Listen to this, read. And the king said to Doeg, turn thou and fall upon the priest. And Doeg, the Edomite, turned, and he fell upon the priest. He got Edom on. He sent Esau there. You know Esau going to do it. He sent the enemy like, okay, kill the priest. Read on. And slew on that day four score and five persons that did wear a linen ephod. Read. And now the city of the priest smote he with the edge of the sword. Both men and women, children and sucklings, and oxen and asses and sheep with the edge of the sword. Read. And one of the sons of Himelech, the son of ah Ahitab, named Abiathar, escaped the fl and fled after David. And Abiathar showed David that Saul had slain the Lord's priest. And David said unto Abiathar, I knew it that day, when Doeg the Edomite was there, that he would surely tell Saul, I have occasioned the death of all the persons of thy father's house. Me. Abide thou with me, fear not, for he that seeketh my life seeketh thy life. But with me, thou shalt be in safety. So you see what he did? He killed all the priests and then went throughout the land of Nob and slow, uh, smoked everybody. When his servants didn't want to do it, he sent and turned. That's the other thing. You get out the spirit, you get to join the enemy. You be so far gone out, now you join the enemy. You talking to the enemy, you think anything the enemy saying is good. You know what I'm saying? This is what happens when the spirit leaves you. Go back to Galatians 5 and 16. Listen to this. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, and verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the spirit, you ain't going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Read on. 
For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So if you ain't walking in the spirit, what he telling you you're going to do? You're going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. What's the lust of the flesh? Hatred. You're going to have hatred for your brother. What's the opposite of hatred? Love your brother. How do you love him, though? So if you got a problem with a brother or sister up in here, the first thing to do is say apply Matthew 18. You know what I'm saying? If you hate a brother, I'm just, so if you hate somebody, the opposite of hatred is love. How do you love your brother? I need the scripture. How do you walk in the spirit to overcome their hatred? All right, Dacey, your hand up. I need the scripture. Okay, all praises. First John 5 and 3, I like that. First John 5 and 3. Young prophet right there. Mm -hmm. The book of 1 John, chapter 5 and verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. So you're supposed to love your neighbor for your, as yourself. This is the love of God that we keep this command free on. And his commandments are not grieved. How do you love your neighbor as yourself? What's the scripture? Uh, a writing. Uh, 1 John 5 and 2. Uh, no, not that one, not that one. Show me the one to show you how you love your neighbor as yourself. Of course, it's to keep the commandments, but I want you to go in depth into it. Zephaniah. Uh, Leviticus 19 and 17. No, nah, it ain't that, but you can use them too. Don't hate your brother in your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. You're right. It's something I want. I want you to explain Romans love thy neighbor as yourself. Romans 13 and 8. Read that. It's how you love your neighbor as yourself. You got hatred for somebody. The scriptures say don't hate your brother in your heart. Rebuke your neighbor. Go to him. Like, look, brother, this is the problem that I got with you. And try to fix it. You know what I'm saying? He said love your neighbor as yourself. This is how you love your neighbor as yourself right here. Listen to this. Read. The book of Romans, chapter 13 and verse 8. Owe no man anything but to love one another. Look, if somebody loan you something, you pay it back. That's love according to God. Read on. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. When you love your brother, you fulfilling the law. Read on. For this. Look, you know, that's how you know David hated. I mean, Saul hated David. Saul was not fulfilling the law. The, the spirit in our way already left for him. When you love your brother and sister, what you going to keep doing? You're going to keep fulfilling the law. You're going to keep fulfilling the law. No matter how much you can't get along with nobody, how much you can't stand them, you still going to fulfill the law. Read up. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. You won't commit adultery with your brother's wife if you love him where you love yourself. Read on. Thou shalt not kill. You won't kill your brother if you love him as you love yourself. That's how you know Saul hated himself. Hell, he hated himself. The spirit left him. When the spirit leaves you, you'll start to hate yourself. You know why he hated himself? Because he was trying to kill his brother. Read on. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not bear false witness. You won't bear false witness. You won't deal deceitful. What did he do? The spirit in left Saul. He started to deal deceitful. Read on. Thou shalt not covet. You look at that covetous spirit got on Saul when the spirit left him. Read on. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Because he was covered, he covered the fame that David got when he went out to war. Oh, Saul killed his thousands, but David killed his thousands down. He wanted that praise. Why? Because he was puffed up. For real. Just like uh, get John 1 and 19. I mean Jude 1 and 19. I'm going to show you what's going, what happens when the spirit will leave you and what you're supposed to do to keep the spirit from leaving you. Listen to this. Jude verse 19. These be that these be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the spirit. When the spirit leaves you, what you do, y'all? What's, what's, what's what you do? Separate. You separate yourself. They say you don't got the spirit. But if you got the spirit, go to Hebrews 10 and 25. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. You, that. you ain't gonna forsake the assembly of yourselves together. That's why we be seeing people separate themselves. We already know, oh, yeah, they out the spirit. The scripture says you out the spirit. Read up. <laughs> As the manner of some is. That's what they're doing. Now you forsaking the assembly of yourself together. You out the spirit. Read up. But exhorting one another, 
And so much the more as ye see the day approach. Give me that in Ephesians chapter 4. He said you're supposed to exhort one another. When you're in the spirit, you come together. When you out the spirit, you separate. It's simple and easy as that. That's easy to understand. Give Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. Endeavoring to keep the you unity. Know that? When you're in the spirit, you endeavor to keep the unity. When you're out of the spirit, you don't give a damn about unity. Read on. Of the spirit in the bond of peace. In the bond of peace. Endeavor means to go above and beyond. To do whatever you got to do to keep the unity going. Read on. There is one body. All right, you can stop right there. So when you're in the spirit, you do what? You endeavor to keep the unity. When you're out of the spirit, you're like, what the hell with the unity? You ain't trying to unify. you out of the spirit. For real. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. All right, look. Give, uh, let me see, let me see. Um, I got like a couple more minutes. Covetous. Uh, Covetous. Covetous. All right, go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. So you're still dealing with walking in the spirit. When you're out of the spirit, you covet. When you're in the spirit, you what? You content. You content. The scripture says, get there to 1 Timothy 6. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 6 and verse 8. Start at, yeah, start at uh, 6 real quick. Verse 6. But godliness with contentment is a is great gain. Godliness with contentment, that's a great gain. Read on. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. You want to save up five million for what? You can't take it with you. You might leave it behind to a fool. You die and leave it down, leave it behind to somebody that's gonna break the commandments of God. That's what uh, when you read the book of Ecclesiastes, what Solomon was talking about. Gathering all the riches to leave it behind to a fool. Left it down behind to his son, what his son did. Broke the kingdom up into two. That's why we divide it to this day. Read on. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. He said, when you got food and raiment, you're supposed to be content. But when you out of the spirit, read on. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and they snare. When you when you out of the spirit, you trying to you chasing money, you chasing dreams, you fall into temptation and the snare. Read on. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts. You fall into many foolish and hurtful lusts. Read on. Which drown men in destruction and perdition. Now you drown it in destruction and perdition. You falling off. You know what I'm saying? Read on. For the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. Just like I was dealing with the brothers yesterday about the Sabbath. Now, some of y'all, you don't have to work the Sabbath, but some of y'all, you'll go in on the Sabbath willingly just to get extra money. And I was telling the brothers, I was like, okay, think about some of us in here, we don't got no good jobs, we don't got no career, but you probably make like, what, $10 an hour or some. you go in and work the Sabbath, that's five hours, you need to make, what, $50. You went to, with the, with the work for an extra $50 to make nothing. You sold your soul for 50 bucks. 50 bucks. You know what I'm saying? But you you missing every Sabbath for this little 50 bucks. Now the spirit starting to leave you. You ain't congregating. You ain't getting the spiritual move, food you need to be built up and to continue through the week. For what? 50 bucks. $50. Come on, man. Y'all got to get it together. Then you want, what's the opposite of that? To walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit, keep the Sabbath. When you're out of the spirit, you go work each and every Sabbath. We understand that some of y'all, you forced to work the Sabbath and you really don't want to be there. Some of y'all know brothers up in here willingly and when they got jobs, they said, look, you got to work on Sabbath. Instead of trying to find a job, they say, you, they find a job that make them work the Sabbath. They quit the old one they have. They find a job that make them work the Sabbath. And then sit up there and think they're in the spirit. You got the spirit like hell. When they could have sat up there and kept finding, looking, and find a job that makes you not work the Sabbath. And then next thing you know, you, you don't keep, after a while, I'm telling you, after so much amount of time, when you ain't keeping the Sabbath, you ain't cooking again, you ain't coming together, the spirit going to leave you. You don't even see it right now. You, still, you think you're still in the spirit. It starts to start leave you slowly but surely. Read up. Which was some covenant after they have erred from the faith. You hear that kind of why? Because you covered it. Whatever the hell you covered in out there that caused you to break the laws of God, that's got you out of the spirit. When you work in the Sabbath period and you choose to work the Sabbath period, you're out of the spirit. I'm just telling you the truth. Now, this means willingly. 
Not you doing it by force. You went out here. I was, I was telling the brothers last night, I seen a class Bishop Kana did. Bishop Kana sat up there and he was like, um, he was talking about, you know, he's been in the truth over 20 some years. He got 13 kids. And within the 20 years, 13 kids, he said he never wanted for nothing a day in his life. He always been straight. The most I always gave him everything he needed, you know what I'm saying? And then he got to dealing with brothers working on the Sabbath. They're like, yeah, we know you need a job. All of us need jobs. But why would you go get the job that make you disobey the commandments of God? Why not go learn a skill set or something? Instead of brothers sitting up here going out here learning a skill set set to help to create your own job or to create your own business, you go out and break the laws of God. And when Bishop could not have said that, I had to examine my spirit. Because I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I was telling the brothers, this is why it's good too, to have you a wife they keep the command. Because I was sitting up there, I already was going to different brothers saying, look, I think I need to get like one or two jobs just to get my money up. I, I can use the same scriptures y'all use to work the Sabbath day. Hey, we're in captivity, <laughs> bro. Cap That's what they say, captivity. I can use the same scriptures you use, go out here and get two jobs and, and stack my money up for a whole year and, and, and be straight and use the same scriptures you use. But my wife sitting up there, she's like, what the hell you going to do that for? You, you straight. She like you good, you don't you don't need nothing else. She like who gonna travel? You just gonna stop traveling like that? Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.